Hello and welcome once again to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with you here this week all by myself in this segment. Kent Myers is traveling and will not be with us on today's show, but we do have very interesting guests heading our way. We're going to be visiting with the CEO and also the president of the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. You know, in general, it seems like more people are buying and selling a home in the Oklahoma City community. It also seems like the prices throughout the state of Oklahoma are generally higher. Myth or reality? We'll get some hard-nosed answers today as we visit with people from the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. You also may recall on a recent show we visited with people from the Oklahoma Association of Bankers and they discussed how they are moving into some territory previously occupied by the real estate industry. So what's the real estate people's take on the bankers moving into real estate aspects of our economy? We'll get that point of view today as well. We look forward to it. Hope you're planning on staying with us. It's The Verdict and I'll be right back. The day Chesapeake became a leading force in Fort Worth's Barnett Shale was a day of victory for all of our nation. The biggest new natural gas field in the country is on the front lines of American energy, and so is Chesapeake. We're pioneers of horizontal drilling, which makes it possible to tap the potential of a great field like the Barnett Shale under cities like Fort Worth. Chesapeake was founded to focus purely on developing America's clean burning natural gas. And today, we drill more new gas wells than anyone else. Across America, Chesapeake's drilling creates more jobs, tax collections, and income for landowners. We're a growing source of U.S. energy and economic strength, proving that victory is right under our feet. Chesapeake. American energy wins the day. And Blankenship has stopped at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. Leading at fourth and seven on the Tiger, fourth and six yard line. 38 mm -hmm. seconds on the clock. The Tigers have no choice but to go. Uh -huh. Wiggins ended his kicking. Here's the snap. And the kick is away. <laughs> Looks like somebody doesn't want you to know the facts about Cox Digital Telephone. Maybe it's because over one and a half million customers are saving big, and you can too. Plus, you'll save even more on all your Cox services when you bundle today. Oh, here's that new phone service I've been hearing about. So, while the phone company may not like competition, nice doggy. you're gonna love nice it. Doggy. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. Never give your name, phone, address, or password to anyone you met online, and always keep your personal information private. It's the safe way for kids. Right, gang? Right. Be safe online. Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. And welcome back to The Verdict. Mick Cornett with you. Kent Myers has the week off. He is traveling and he should be back in a few weeks. we got a show today. Uh, we're visiting with the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. Lisa Yates and Dennis Nevius are our guests. Let me first introduce uh, Lisa Yates to you. She is the CEO of the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. She got her undergraduate degree from Southern Nazarene University and a law degree from Oklahoma City University. She's a registered lobbyist and has been working for the OAR for several years. This is her first visit on The Verdict. Lisa, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. She is joined today by Dennis Nevius. Dennis is originally from Enid, but now lives in Edmond. He is the president of the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. He graduated from UCO. He's the founder of Keller Williams Offices in Edmond, Oklahoma. He has received the Lifetime Achievement Award from the Edmond Board of Realtors, volunteers with Habitat for Humanity, and uh, several other organizations. Dennis, thanks for joining us here on The Verdict. Thank you, mate. Let's go back and let's talk about the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. For the person who has only seen it on paper, Lisa, tell us what they do. Uh, the Oklahoma Association of Realtors is a statewide professional trade association. 
We provide a number of different services to our members. We have about 25 local boards of realtors throughout the state of Oklahoma, all the way from Guymon to Southern Oklahoma Board of Realtors down in McAllister. So um, we have about 11,000 members. Our primary mission is to provide uh, kind of be the voice for real estate in Oklahoma, which includes all of our activities at the state <coughs> capitol, and also a variety of different services and um, issues that we uh, deal with on behalf of our members. Would you say this is an especially busy time for issues coming before the legislature? Is this pretty routine as we head into the 07 session? Um, well, I've been, I've been working with Oklahoma Association of Realtors for a number of years now, and it seems like just as time goes on, there's just more and more issues. I think it's going to be an interesting legislative session. I don't see, there's a, a lot more issues than we typically see at the legislature. So it's always something. It's always something. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis, how do you get to be a realtor? If, if someone out there has uh, always wondered about that profession and decided, you know, maybe it's the day's the day I start taking a step in that direction, right. what would you recommend they do? Well, they have to take a pre-licensing course and after they've taken about 90 hours of classroom time, then they're able to set for the exam. And the Real Estate Commission is the one that administers that. And then they're able to get their license if they pass a test, and then they have approximately 30 days to put their license with a broker. And so there are there real estate schools or training courses that someone can, can w that would help them uh, prepare for these, for sure. these tests? Sure. There's various courses that are offered by tech schools, uh, other realtors who have schools mm -hmm. that are available and sometimes from their own broker. In general, are these people with undergraduate degrees or, or, or not? Okay, in Oklahoma, an undergraduate degree is not required. Like in Texas, it is required. But uh, we've made it fairly easy for people to get into real estate here. Mm -hmm. And what degrees are typical of someone in the real estate profession? Is there one undergraduate line of, of, of courses that, that people generally take? No, it's, it's varied. We have people from almost any industry, who may have started out in a particular field who decide through either because of having children they want to be able to start something or uh, various reasons but people seem to be from every walk of life and every nationality it, it's just whoever wants to get in we we've, we've have provided that avenue. Now it, it seems to me that not everyone that is licensed is just confined to a realty interest. Sometimes I'll hear of a developer who has a real estate license or, right. or or maybe somebody else in a similar business. What are some of the other ancillary businesses that a real estate license might help? Well, like builders. We do see some builders that have the real estate license or their wife may have the license or the husband. Uh, it's, it's a business that a lot of people get into uh, for the extra income and uh, many of the different businesses do that. Lisa, what's the difference between a real estate agent and a realtor? Um, well, a realtor, the word realtor, is a trademark term that can only be used by people who are members of our association. So I know that some people use it in a generic sense, mm -hmm. but really it designates those people who um, have joined our association and have agreed to abide by the Realtor Code of Ethics. A real estate licensee is someone who has a real estate license that's issued by the Real Estate Commission but is not a member of our association. Uh, the Real Estate Commission is the licensing authority for the state. So in order to become a real estate licensee, after you um, take the education Dennis was talking about, you need to go down, take your test, and the li actual license is issued by the Real Estate Commission. Hmm. And so. And, and is there a difference? How many people, if you were gonna divide real estate agents with realtors, which group would be larger? Well, there's more real estate licensees than there are realtors. Uh, there's about 11,000 realtors and about twice that many people who are licensed to sell real estate. Most of the, what we find though is uh, maybe 95% of the real estate business is done, however, by realtors. Hmm. On a past show, we had a representative from the Oklahoma Bankers Association indicate that, that bankers were uh, uh, starting to take on <coughs> real estate type ventures. Um, basically by acquiring existing realtor firms and then having them operate out of the bank's premise. What's the stance of, of your organization on well, that? Well, this is an issue actually that the Oklahoma Bankers Association has just recently taken up and we have been fighting the very same issue federally for a number of years with the American Bankers Association trying to allow federally chartered banks 
to expand their powers, and one of those powers would be getting into the real estate brokerage business. We've opposed it federally, and we continue to oppose it on a state level. Um, the proposal by the Bankers Association is to allow uh, state chartered banks to be given, or the, allow them to be um, take advantage of any other powers given to other banks in other states. It's not just real estate brokerage business, but it would be any other uh, powers that have been given by other state legislators or other banking commissioners in other states. We just think that's, that's bad public policy to say, okay, well, whatever another state is doing is going to be okay in Oklahoma. We think that the legislature in Oklahoma should be the one to determine what powers a bank has and what's appropriate. Um, another issue, I mean, primarily and specifically to the question of banks getting into real estate, there's been a reason why banks are kept separate in our economy from commerce and business. And, and it's an obvious conflict of interest. If you're taking depositors' money and then using that money to compete against those people, that's just inherently unfair, it seems to us, in the scheme of our economy. And so I think uh, it, that's been a 200-year tradition, keeping banks separate, keeping them devoted to the business of banking, and we think it should stay that way. Dennis, do you have any thoughts? Well, it's, a, it's kind of the same issue in reverse that we've seen with Walmart wanting to get into banking because the banks have said no we don't want Walmart to get into banking because they'll be able to compete too too well and put us out of business well that's kind of the way we look at banking they have banks already located throughout the state in almost every town and they already have these nice buildings all over and for them to compete and be able to borrow the money at the Fed rate say at two to three percent and then have that advantage to directly influence the real estate transaction or any other business that they deem to go into, I think most businesses should be concerned. Dennis Nevius, Lisa Yates are here with the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. In the next segment, we're going to ask them, good time to buy, good time to sell. We'll see if we can't get some predictions out of them. It's all coming up in our next segment on The Verdict. The Journal Record is pleased to be a sponsor of The Verdict. The Journal Record, since 1903, the best source of Oklahoma business news and legal information. Shining is taking responsibility. At Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, we know managing your health care can be overwhelming, and it's our job to help you meet the challenge. By guiding, supporting, and showing the way, we encourage you to gain control. Because we believe the best tool we can give you is the confidence to take charge. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Oklahoma, shining through. Okiwani is an Indian name for a place where children play. When we obtained the camp, we found a lot of oil debris left in the woods. We saw a commercial about how the oil and natural gas industry cleans up old oil well sites. We called the OERB and they agreed to remove tons of concrete and steel didn't cost us a thing. Thousands of children have left their footprints on this land. Thanks to the oil and gas industry, they will for a long time to come. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate. We're accountants. We do taxes, business valuations, estate planning, and consulting. And we're right here in Oklahoma, working with the owners of small and medium-sized businesses. Steve Wilsey, and Stuart Meyer have the resources and the experience. We'll see Meyer Eatman Tate in Oklahoma City and Tulsa. Oh, hi. I know you guys said I'd save with Cox Digital Telephone. Well, my bill came and... Could this be right? You may be surprised how much you save with Cox Digital Telephone. That's why over a million and a half people have switched. So this really is a total. Lovely. Because I think I found a good use for the savings. With Cox, there's no waiting for the other shoe to drop. The only surprise is there's no surprise at all. Not sure where you're headed? NATS can help you find your way. It's the National Athletic Testing System. We call it NATS. You'll call it your launching pad to success. 
NATS will give you a standardized evaluation that will help you measure your performance and give that information to college coaches so they can accurately evaluate your potential. NATS also helps with academic support. Join with the Oklahoma High School Football Coaches Association and head for success at www.nats.us. Welcome back to The Verdict. We are visiting with Lisa Yates. She is the CEO of the Oklahoma Association of Realtors and Dennis Nevius. He is the president of the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. You may remember on our recent show we had members of the Oklahoma Bankers Association on and they discussed how the banking industry was moving into areas previously thought of as being uh, real estate uh, issues and uh, heard one point of view and uh, I, I know that uh, Lisa and Dennis have some differing thoughts on that same issue and, and how that's going to ultimately benefit or harm the consumer. Lisa, what's, what's your take on it? Well, we think that ultimately the consumer loses. When, when banks get into the stream of commerce and particularly into real estate brokerage business. Um, I, a number of different reasons, you know, they talk about a one-stop shop where, you know, I go in and I, you know, my real estate broker is right there and the bank has got all my mortgage products and insurance products and we think the consumer loses in that rather than benefits. You know, right now when you go to an independent real estate broker, they will shop around and help you shop around for the best mortgage product that you can find, the best interest rate, um, the best, you know, uh, appraisal rate, all those things that a realtor will help you shop around with. And we think that moving that all to an in-house operation of the bank, that the consumer's not going to be given those kinds of choices when uh, they come at that point in the transaction. And maybe less uh, a less commitment to finding the right house for the for the buyer when you're really just an employee of the bank or mm -hmm. you know a, a general contractor or whatever to the bank and so we think the consumer stands to lose um, in terms of service and customer service also we think he stands to lose negotiating power you know the that you can negotiate your fee with every real estate broker that you talk to and I know consumers don't some think that, but you can. All fees, all real estate commissions are negotiable. When was the last time you ever went in and negotiated your fee with the bank? The bank is primarily in a, a more powerful position when it comes to negotiating, and so we think fees and services of any degree, you'll have very little negotiating power when you go in to negotiate with the bank. Right. I think also, if banks get into construction, like they did during the 80s and the SNL fiasco that took place. That's one of the reasons that we had a lot of them go under because they did get into real estate mm -hmm. and they were allowed to get into real estate ventures and then when things turned the wrong way, those assets went away and we, the taxpayer, ended up paying for that in billions of dollars. I know you all are also interested in the eminent domain issue. Back in June of 2005, the Supreme Court uh, failed to rule on uh, Kelo versus the city of New London, Connecticut. And ever since then, there's been a cry for government to perhaps put in more stipulation on eminent domain laws, uh, perhaps at the federal level, perhaps at the state level. And I'm sure that impacts the realty industry. What's your take on it? Absolutely. And this is a primary lobbying point that um, we have had for years, and that's the protection of private property rights. The eminent domain goes to the heart of those rights. And we watch all of the bills at the legislature, but this year we find that there's a lot of eminent domain bills that have been filed um, dealing with the issue in a variety of different ways, and we're going to be on top of that issue and, and making sure that the interest of government and expanding, even for economic development purposes, is really weighed against the individual's private property rights. In general, do you agree or disagree with the current level of Oklahoma's statutes involving eminent domain? Well, I think that they need some work. I mean, they need some added protection for the, the, pro the property owner, and I think that's what we hope will come out of these bills on eminent domain. A little bit more specific protection for the property owner. Any other major issues at the legislature that we and haven't talked about Yeah, so far? another issue, well, of course we have lots, but another issue that we're promoting, actually, from our association is background checks, mandatory background checks for all people who are applying for real estate licensee, a uh, real estate license in our state. If, if you can imagine, um, that's currently not required. Hmm. There are background checks that are done on people who are there so are no if, problems. So if someone had broken laws as a real estate agent in another state and they moved to Oklahoma, there might not be any safeguard to catch them before they were licensed here? That's right. Hmm. And so the safeguards that we're proposing will make sure that everybody who's new and applying for 
a real estate license will have a background check. And we think that that benefits everybody. Dennis, I haven't bought a home in eight years. I think one of the big difference between 1998, 99, and 2007 is the advent and the increase of usage of the internet. And I think that, right. that must be making big changes in your business. How, how is that changing it? Well, specifically, most buyers will go to the internet first. In fact, it's over 80% now. And most buyers will look for up to six months before they might actually go out and look at homes with a realtor mm -hmm. or a real estate agent. And we find that actually helps in a lot of cases because it educates them to what the prices are in particular areas that they might have driven through. It also shows them price points as far as different things that are being offered on houses, different amenities, and uh, educates them to a great extent where before we had to put them in the car and go show them. And with virtual tours and a lot of the other things that we put on the internet site now, it allows them to really glean a lot of information. What's your point of view on, uh, on the issue of should the uh, buyer and seller have separate real estate agents representing them? And uh, also with the uh, uh, property owners who sell themselves, private, private, private citizens who choose not to hire a realtor. Right. Well, obviously there's a lot to buying and selling a house. Uh, when I first started in real estate, we had a one-page contract. It was very simple, easy to do. Uh, now, I think uh, the last contract I just turned in this week there were 14 pages, and then because it was a corporate seller, we had 49 pages of addendums. Now, for a buyer to go out there and buy something on their own with that kind of situation, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, you, you can get into a lot of situations that you're not even aware of that you need to know about, and you need somebody to help you along the way because you're going to have a lot of questions regarding what about this, what about that in the transaction. Well, let's talk about the real estate market in general. We have heard uh, that nationally sales have dipped somewhat after some robust years in the, in the last few, but here in Oklahoma that doesn't seem to be necessarily the case, and I know you, you brought a copy of the business section of the Daily Oklahoman uh, recently, and it says area home sales defy the national slump. So are we okay? Is our real estate market pretty strong? We are. We have seen a little bit of overbuilding in the upper price ranges, and I think that is coming back to the norm here in the next few months because uh, the banks who loan to contractors that are building houses and builders, uh, they're pulling that back to some extent and they're allowing that excess supply to deplete a little bit, which we need. Let's take a look at a graphic I think that will will, will okay. show and perhaps verify some of the impact you say. And what you see here on the left is a graphic and that's uh, the most recent year that we just finished, 2006, and this is the average sale price. So it would appear there's just been a slight increase here over the past three years, pretty steady. You don't see the dips that you see in a lot of markets, do you? That's right. Uh, a lot of the markets that have seen dips recently, actually, Mick, are like in Florida. My niece lives in Fort Lauderdale. Uh, she was able to buy a condo about four years ago for 125000 A year and a half later, she put it on the market for 225000 mm -hmm. We have never seen those kind of increases. And it, you would expect to see a downturn or a change in market price when you see those kind of changes. Uh, Oklahoma has really been on just a slow, steady increase, which is great for business here. And here's a, a graph that shows the number of homes sold uh, in, in 2006 is on the left, and obviously the, the preceding years there. And although there was a slight dip in 2002, you see a, a steady increase. So what, what percentage are we looking at, both from a housing price and number of homes sold? How, what percentage can be counted on over a series of years? Well, I think the next few years, we expect the market to stay, maybe not quite as robust as it has been the past three years, but we do expect it to stay at a, a very good point. And when you say, well, how is it now compared to 10 years ago? Yeah. Well, it depends on what part of the market you're looking at, because the various price ranges, we see better increases in the lower end. Uh, price increases in the upper end has been a lot of it because of amenity increases, like everybody's putting in granite countertops now. All of them have extra landscaping. There's there's various things that go along with why are we seeing increases, decreases mm -hmm. in the location, market. location, location. That's, right. that's still the, the the number one, two, and three factor. Uh, it's in the top two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And uh, how important is school district in, in determining uh, the, uh, the market's viability? That seems to be very important to a lot of buyers. They're looking for viable schools. 
they're looking for a nice place to raise their family. Some people are looking for gated communities. Uh, but most people are looking for a great place to live. We are out of time, but thank you both for coming on the show. Sure. Dennis Nevius. Appreciate it. Lisa, thank, thank you, you for coming in, both from the Asso Oklahoma Association of Realtors. We appreciated their first visit on the show, and of course, we'll have to have them back on a future show. Uh, I'll be back with a final word after this. The good life comes naturally to Tulsa, where nature's beauty is matched with an eye for aesthetics. A legacy of neighborhoods graced with lawns and landscaping and handsome homes. A place that seems to have patented an ideal lifestyle. Bank First is loyal to the quality of life Tulsa assures its citizens, to the priority placed on education, culture, and growth. Loyal to builders who transform raw land into residential charm. Developers who see opportunity and add vitality to Tulsa's economy. Bank First serves both enterprise and private lives that need a loyal partner. It's how we help nurture this city's very good life. Bank First. Loyal to Oklahoma. Loyal to you. There's a whole new world online, but it's not always safe for kids. Never agree to meet anyone you only know online, because they might not be who they say they are. And if you must meet them, take a parent along. It's the safe way for kids. Right, gang? Right. Be safe online. Thanks to Lauren Nelson and Cox, we're working to keep Oklahoma kids safer online. For your free guide, log on now. And if you feel your child has been placed in danger by someone online, notify law enforcement today. Hi, honey. You've got to check this out. What? What are we listening to? I had digital phone service installed today. It sounds just like before. I know, but it's going to save us a ton of money. With Cox Digital Telephone, you'll save big every month. Keep your same phone number and get your favorite calling features. Just pay less. That does sound good. You should hear the upstairs phone. I want to thank our guests on today's show, Lisa Yates and Dennis Nevius from the Oklahoma Association of Realtors. Check out our website, theverdict.tv. The preceding program was produced by the Production Services Group at Cox Communications, exclusively for the Cox Channel.